Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. I know what you're wondering, what is this doing in front of me? Well, you now have your new printer, let's get started and show you some basics. Let's rock! Alright guys, so... Standing in front of me here is what I would consider the most popular and definitely the best entry-level 3D printer that you can buy. This is a Creality Ender 3 uh, 3D printer. Um, I actually have a couple of these at the house, and we use them for printing everything from uh, game cases to uh, little cubes and stuff. And I'll get a little assortment of that out here in a little bit and show you kind of the idea of the stuff you can make with it. There really is no limit. Your imagination is about the limit. But now that you've got it, and you're excited to get your first test, your first foray into the world of 3D printing, let's give you some basics because you're going to go out on YouTube and you're going to find all kinds of videos and tutorials and they're going to be referencing things on here for upgrades and different parts and, and sections of the printer that you're not really going to understand. So that's my goal today. I want to give you a rundown on the printer, what all the parts are, how they all work, what you can upgrade. And most of the, believe it or not, most of the upgrades on this you can actually print yourself with a couple of exceptions. And we'll go over that too. All right, so I got Stumpy lined up here. So as you can see, this is a well used printer. We use this uh, all the time, it's constantly in motion here. Um, so when you pull this out of the box and you assemble it, obviously you won't have your filament roll on here, which by the way, we will be going into how to change the filament. All right. Um, your bed's going to be back here in the center. It's going to be all nice and clean and brand new and shiny. All right. So once you're aligned, there's a few things you're going to want to know. And we're going to go over a couple of what this stuff is actually called. Um, when you're looking at the printer from the front, all right, this is actually the nozzle under here. And hopefully Stumpy, I'm going to see if I can re-angle him to get a good upshot on that there. There we go. So this is the actual nozzle. Behind that is called the hot end. Now this is where the filament goes through is heated up and then is liquefied and then put out the nozzle. All right, you've got a cooling fan right here on the front that cools that hot end and keeps it constantly cool. If that fan didn't, what would happen is as it melted, it would start to crawl up this tube and then it would solidify in there. That's called heat creep. That is a common failure in printers. So if you're ever noticing that or it just stops printing for whatever reason, typically that heat creep is going to be your biggest cause. All right. Um, now, once you get past the hot end, you've got your two connectors here that connect what's called your Bowden tube. And this is the tube that actually pulls the filament from the extruder, which I'm going to take Stumpy around here to the other side. All right. So here's the tube. The tube goes up here to what's called the extruder. Now I'm going to get you a little overview of this. Now, the extruder actually has a small gear. And as you can see inside there, it's got a little wheel. And the filament, and hopefully Stumpy is getting that, is smashed between that gear and that wheel. So when that gear spins, it pushes the filament through that direction, then it liquefies it and comes out the nozzle, laying down a pattern on your plate, okay? Before that, it comes up here to the filament, and this is your spool. Now, this placement is actually stock for this, and, and typically it's one of the first things that I eliminate. I'm going to put Stumpy back over here for us. Um, not necessarily because it's a, a bad positioning or anything, but it does tend to put strain on the filament because instead of going in straight, you're kind of coming down on an angle and then bending in. Uh, and as anybody that in electronics will tell you, 90 degree angles are never, never, never a good thing. So you want to try to avoid that. However, let's go over a list of a couple things you can print for yourself. Uh, the first of which is actually a spool holder that comes off the side of the printer and sits right here, the spool would sit here and feed directly into it. I'm going to put all the links to these things down here in the description from a website called Yegi. Um, that's another resource you're going to want to know. Once again, I'll link that down there in the description. But you can print the spool holder. Another thing that you'll want to print on this, over the top of this, this is where the actual motherboard is that controls all of the motors on this. That little fan right here comes on when it gets hot in there. Um, but as you can see, based on the placement of this fan, Filament chunks can fall down into the fan, fall down to the board. Probably won't be an issue, could be an issue, right? So one of the things you can print is you can actually print a replacement cover for this that screws down with the factory screws right here. And hopefully Stumpy's getting a good shot of that. Bring him over here a little closer. There we go. So it screws down with the factory screws. And it looks kind of like a little hood scoop on a race car and pokes out to the forward here and pulls in air that direction 
and keeps things from falling down into it. Now, once again, this is where your motherboard is. Over here, this is your LCD control panel. Now, this is where all of the control of the, of the machine is handled from the machine is right here. And we'll go into a little of that here in just a little bit. Now, you're going to hear uh, something on these things referred to as stepper motors. Now, there are three of them on these type of printers. The stepper motors are these small motors. I'm going to take Stumpy around here. All right. So you've got three stepper motors that actually control the motion, and you've got one stepper motor that actually pushes the filament in. So uh, you've got three axes, the X, Y, and the Z axis. The Z axis is actually what controls the, the uh, up and down, which is going to be down here. So as this turns, this screw lifts this entire print head up and down. All right? You've got the X axis and the Y axis, which control side to side and front to back. One of them is mounted right here. This is actually going to be the one that controls the left to right. It actually turns this little gear in here and it moves this whole print head side to side. All right? And then you've got one on the back here, and this is the one that controls the bed moving back and forth. So when you hear them talk about the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis, and a stepper motor, that's what they're referring to on this. Um, you're also going to hear something on YouTube. It's a really good thing to do. We're not going to get into any advanced calibration here, um, but calibrating your e-steps. Basically what that is is you're telling your extruder how much filament to put out based on the movement speed and the model you're printing. But once again, that's getting a lot more advanced than we want to with a basic video. So we'll go into that a little later on. All right, so a couple of the basics here. So we now know where all of the parts are. We know some of the parts that you can actually 3D print for yourself, and there are a lot more, guys. You can literally 3D print fan covers for yourself to blow down more air down or to mount bigger fans. Um, you can 3D print a belt chain for this cabling back here. And as Stumpy can see, you know, this whole thing is constantly moving when we're printing. So it's moving back and forth all the time. So your cables have to stay out of the way. If they get hung up on this, you'll mess up your cables or the print or your machine. You don't want to do that. Um, you can print a little, and I know you can see from the main camera over here, there's an opening down here where this motherboard is. And I'll tilt him up a little bit so you can see that. You can actually print a case cover that'll fit that too. Um, I haven't done any of that on this one because this is just my workhorse for the bench here. Uh, now, one upgrade that I absolutely, definitely think you need to do right off the bat, if you buy a Creality Ender 3, we were talking about the extruder, and I'm going to turn Stumpy around here once again to show you this. All right, this is the extruder that pulls the filament in. The stock extruder on an Ender 3 is plastic. Now, that's okay for about the first, oh, heck, it could be two weeks, could be a month, Regardless of how long it is, it will break. And what happens is it'll form a hairline crack right here on this wheel. When that happens, this is not pressed hard enough against the wheel to push the filament through properly. And you get this little white wispy line of filament if you get anything at all. That's the first thing you're going to want to replace. Upgrade this to the aluminum extruder. It's a $6 part on Amazon, but it will save you a ton of headaches in the future. Um, the other thing you'll notice about the plastic is... You see the angle this comes, if you're going to use the stock spool holder for this, you'll see the angle that comes down here, and this goes in. Well, on aluminum, this is, it's beveled down here. I'm not sure if Stumpy's picking that up well, but see it's beveled in here, which means you're not going to put any strain on your filament. However, with the plastic ones, this filament will literally eat into the plastic. You will groove a hole right into the side of it. Um, so regardless of when you do it, eventually you're going to have to upgrade that. Do it day one and save yourself a whole lot of headache. That's, that's my suggestion on that. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to fire this up. I'm going to go through a couple of the basics on the menus, and then I'm going to show you how to install and change your filament. All right, guys, so as you can see, we're all set up and turned on here. Um, we're going to do a little bit of uh, constructive movement with Stumpy, so I can kind of show you this as we're going along. But the first thing I wanted to show you is this is the basic menu when you first turn on the Creality Ender 3. Um, we're going to go through a couple of the menus here just to show you. Now, pushing down on this will actually select, uh, and then rotating it will cycle through the menus, all right? So, if you go into the prepare menu, this is where you're actually going to be able to automatically prepare it to either accept PLA or ABS or whatever you're printing in. Uh, if you do that, it will automatically set the temperatures. It'll bring both the bed and the nozzle up to temperature, and then it will wait for the command for you to print. Um, so if you go down here, one of the options is for Auto Home. And what Auto Home does, Auto Home will actually take this and put it into the home position. Now that's incredibly important 
in just a minute. We'll go back over that. Now, I'm not going to go through all these menus because a lot of these we're not going to need to get into right now. But those are the important ones. Now, you can run through the preheat uh, for PLA and ABS for changing your filament, but it's not necessary. You can actually just heat up the extruder or the bed by themselves, and I'll show you how to do that. All right? So we're going to go back up here to the main, and we're going to go to control. All right, now see where it says control temperature. And from here, you can set your nozzle temperature, your bed temperature, and your fan speed, which is actually the fan on the side that cools the product. Now, don't necessarily have to set that. It's set automatically when you uh, slice your image in Cura. So you don't have to worry about that. But, so let's go over here and to change the filament, you have to have a minimum temperature of 175 degrees on the nozzle. You can't be any lower than that because this filament solidifies inside this nozzle, and if, it's, if you're putting in new filament, it has to be hot, otherwise it'll just get up to it and stop, and there's no hole to go through. It's just a solid chunk of plastic. So let's go ahead. We're going to heat this up. You can see I'm rotating it up, and we'll take it up to 200. 201. Sounds good to me. Now, we're not going to heat the bed yet. We'll heat it here in just a little bit once we're onto that phase of this print. So, all right. Go back up to control and go back to main and info. Now, as you can see, the bed will now start heating up. Or excuse me, the nozzle will now start heating up. And it actually does this very quickly. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to let this get up to temperature here. And, and while it's heating up, I'm going to move Stumpy so I can show you what we're going to do with the filament. All right, now that we are actually up to temperature, and I know Stumpy's got a picture of the extruder here. You can see that. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove the existing filament, and then we will reinstall it so you can see how that's done. All right? So, to remove the filament at any point in time during the print, you just pause the print, stop the print, or you're just done and want to change your color. You press this lever, and you hold it in. I'm going to let Stumpy see that, all right? And you just simply pull the filament out. Just pull it out. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, don't let go of this end. If you do, you can cause this thing to tangle up, and it, some, some of the spools are wound so tightly they just kind of spring out like a, a spring. So you don't want to do that. All right. So then you would change your roll. In this case, we're just going to use the same one we have on here. Now, I'm going to let Stumpy see this. You can see how when you pull that out, it's got like a little ridge on it. Now, you can feed that back through there, but it's actually a little difficult. So what I typically do is take some cutters. Uh, in your kit, if you buy one of these, you've got some little blue handle cutters. Cut this into a point. Take off that rough end and cut a little point out of it. I'm going to show Stumpy there. So you got a little point there. All right. You're going to feed this in the exact opposite way. So you've got a little hole here. Let me show Stumpy that hole. Right there. And this is going to go into that hole. It's going to feed between that gear right there and that little wheel. And then it's going to go down into this uh, little Bowden tube here. Now, it can take a couple of tries to get this, guys. Um, when you're feeding it through, if, that, if, if it hooks on the edge of the Bowden tube, it feels like you're hitting resistance. Just back it out a little bit. Turn your filament a tiny bit and go back in again. There should be no resistance once you're in that tube, all right? So, once again, we're going to press and hold this lever, and we're going to cycle this in. See how it feels like I'm hitting resistance right there? All right, so we're going to turn the tube a little bit. All right, and now when I slide it in there, there it goes. And remember, see, I'm still holding this thing, but I'm sliding it in there. And you want to slide it till you feel resistance. And you can see it going through the tube there. All right, now I'm going to realign Stumpy here. And now once you've got this in, and I'll squish down there. As you can see, you've got some filament that's now coming out of your nozzle. And I'm going to shove in a little bit more here so you can see that come out. There you go. And really, guys, that should be real easy. There shouldn't, If this is up to temperature, um, you should be able to push it through very simply, very easily. All right. So the next thing I want to focus on is leveling this bed. Now, this is one that's incredibly important. Of all the things you're ever going to do with a 3D printer, leveling the bed, number one, hardest thing to learn, but it takes practice. Once you get it, you'll be good at it, I promise. All right, so here's the deal. Remember a minute ago, we went into the menus and we went to the auto home menu. All right, I'm going to center up Stumpy here again. Let me show you how to do this. All right, so we're going to go back into the menu over here. We're going to go to prepare and we're going to go to Auto Home. Now watch what happens. As you can see, the bed slides all the way back, and the nozzle goes back down into the home position in the top left corner of the screen, all right? 
Now, there are a lot of leveling techniques out there. The one I'm going to show you is the most commonly used one that everybody uses. However, even if you level like this, you still want to eyeball and watch your first couple of passes and even sometimes your first couple of rings to make sure you're going to get a good print. Critically important to watch that because, you know, like I said, failed prints are part of 3D printing, but if you watch that first layer, nine times out of ten, if you get a good first layer and everything's going, you're going to end up with a good print. That's it. All right, so we're in auto home position now. Turn the printer off. Now, we do that because that frees up all the motors so we can move this by hand now, okay? We know that this is in the all the way down position, so we're going to move the bed forward a tiny bit, and we're going to move this into that top left corner, all right? Now, what you're going to use is a standard piece of notebook paper or copy paper, like this one right here. All right, so what you're going to do is, now that you've got this in place, you're going to want to put the paper underneath the nozzle, between the nozzle and the, uh, and the bed, all right? Hold on one second here. Now remember, guys, the key to this process is tiny, minute movements. You don't want to move anything gigantic. That's the whole point, all right? So once the paper's underneath, you want to adjust your nozzles, and there are four wheels, one on each corner, and you want to adjust the bed just enough to where you roll it up, and you'll see that it will touch the paper and give a little bit of drag. Wait for it. Right now we're clear. You hear that? A little bit of drag. Move your printhead over to the next side and do the same thing on this corner. Like I said, now when you adjust one corner on this, it's going to kind of make the whole thing move around. So you're going to have to do this about four times to get a good level on it. All right. And remember, when you tighten these up, you're lowering the belt. So righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. That's how this works on this. So if you tighten it up and, and loosen it up, that's how you'll get it. All right, there's a good one there. All right. And to do the back one, you just slide the bed forward and put it under the back one. Leveling is critical, guys. I cannot tell you how important this step is. All right, now that we are leveled on all four corners, and I ended up having to do that a total of four times, guys, so just go the same pattern. So go, you know, uh, bottom left, uh, front, uh, bottom right, top left, top right, and just keep going around and around until you get all of them level, because the whole plate kind of moves like this, and you'll get them to where they're leveled. None of these springs should be hyper compressed, so you should have some pretty good room in there. Uh, the other thing to remember is don't, micro movements guys really small movements on this make really big movements on the bed especially when it's printing so you want to be super careful with that all right now once you've got everything leveled and you're ready to do your first print now we are not going to go into um, how to slice your images and all that uh, if you want I'll do a whole nother video on Tinkercad and Yegi and Cura and all this other stuff but uh, once you have sliced your image on your SD card in this particular case, because there are other ways to do that too, using raspberries or just plugging your computer straight in, once again, videos for the future. But for right now, once you've got your image and you've, you've actually sliced it, you'll actually put it into this SD card slot right here. All right. Then from your main menu, you'll go into the menu. I always click on change SD card every single time I take it out and put it back in. Regardless if it's the same card, always hit that. It refreshes it. And by the way, um, the, I saw a revision of this uh, a couple of days ago from one I built for a customer that actually said change TF card instead of, uh, uh, in this particular case, SD card. Uh, it's the same thing. So just a little different revision of the BIOS on this board. So, all right. So when you go down here, you go to print from SD card. And you type it, you put in whichever print you want to print. 
Now, um, a couple of important things here. Number one, when you label your prints in Cura, name them something you're going to know because if you're making them in Tinkercad or you're saving a, another file, you may not have a clue what this thing actually is. And, and as you can see by some of these names, it, it can get a little sketchy. You have no idea. CR3FC body G code, who knows what any of that is, right? So I happen to know what this top one is because I made it just for this. So what we're going to do is, now that we've got that selected, and I'm going to leave Stumpy on this so you can see the heat up cycle. And we're going to select that. We're going to go to print. And we're going to pick that one. Now you're going to notice the bed is going to start heating up. You'll notice the top number is where it's going to be. And the bottom number is where it is. And that goes for the extruder too. Now, I could have preheated both of these and had them ready so that when I hit print, it would have automatically started printing. That's not a bad plan, guys. That's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to show you guys a full heat up cycle. So as you can see, it's warming up the bed now. Now, whatever you print on an Ender 3, by default, it's going to lay down a solid line horizontally on the, uh, on the build plate beside where it's going to print the actual print. That's the line to watch. If you're getting a nice, good bead on that line, that means you're, you're probably in pretty good shape. Still, watch the first layer go down. And uh, the print we're going to do is about 22 hours. So needless to say, we're not going to get into uh, waiting for that whole print. And I don't have a, a time-lapse photography camera here. I just leave it on all night. So hang on one sec. We're going to get this print started, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so we're heated up. Let's see what she does. There it goes. Now, I've got Stumpy down here so you guys can kind of see, and I'm actually watching this at a low vantage point here. So, as you can see, it's laying down this first strip right here. All right, that's the one that's going to be your telltale sign. Now, you can use a couple of different adhesives on this bed if you need to. Uh, in this particular case, we're not. But if your leveling is correct, you shouldn't need to. And as you can see, it's drawing the first very little circles for this print. I wonder what this print is. I guess we'll find out in about 22 hours, huh? All right, but as you can see, it's going. And away it goes. All right, guys, so in the interest of time, I'm going to let this thing run. I'll be back with you here in a couple minutes, and we'll take a look, and let's, uh, let's see what it looks like. Because as you can see, we've got good adhesion. It's sticking down to the plate well. Bring Stumpy up here, and everything is fine. Now... Um, if you've got a good leveling on this, you don't typically need to use any kind of adhesion on the bed. Uh, if you do want to use any kind of adhesion, I highly suggest this Elmer's glue. It's this kid's glue. Um, it's washable school glue. And they either have white or purple. But just put a light layer down where it's going to print, and then this stuff dries up almost instantly after the print goes down. Uh, and it's real easy to clean off your bed. You just run the bed under hot water, and it literally washes away. So it's pretty good stuff. Um, you shouldn't need this if you're leveled properly, but there are some PLA filaments like this one um, that can be a little um, touchy. So, yeah, not a bad idea. But, all right, guys, so we'll be right back with you. Let's take a look and see what this did. Hang tight. All right, folks, so back with you after about 22 hours of printing. Uh, granted, this was a little larger than I wanted to do for this particular show, but... I, it had to be neat, and I wanted people to see this. And there's a couple reasons, too. Um, so you remember earlier we were discussing supports, uh, how important that was on prints. Now, um, when, you're, when you're slicing your images in Cura, uh, it, you can set your support levels as high or low as you need to. This model technically doesn't need supports, but I typically put in a few of them uh, in the tougher areas just to make sure we get good prints. And as you can see, right along here underneath the chin, and hopefully Stumpy's picking this up pretty well. These are the supports I was talking about. And they just literally come right off. So you can just grab it, and they pull right off, just like that. Now, you, you can actually overdo it with supports quite a bit. If you set your supports too high, you will literally spend days trying to peel the supports off this. I tell you, it, it can be fun. But as you can see, when you've got your printer all dialed in, and you've got it looking just right, man, your prints are going to come off beautiful. And one cool thing about this, this print in particular... Let me take this plate off here to show you something. Now watch this. We're going to take this print, and as you can see, it's adhered onto that plate real well. Bend the plate a tiny bit, and this is the stock ender plate right here. This is no mods, no upgrades. And as you can see, everything comes loose. And my favorite thing about this particular print is it prints fully articulated. 
I'll show you. Get this off here. There we go. Now, this also, when I put the supports in there, it did have about, oh, I'd say maybe a half a percent inside these. It's not necessary once again. Um, but for this, I wanted to make sure we got a perfect model, so I went ahead and added those in. So, all right, and the last one. You guys could probably hear that on Stumpy. Uh-huh. There we go. And we're going to put a little pressure in the middle. And a little pressure in the middle. And off it comes. Look at that. Perfectly articulated, printed exactly like that. I am your printer. Okay, that was terrible. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. This is this is what you do this for. To get perfect prints is awesome. It's a lot of fun, and it's really rewarding. Now, I will tell you, you're not always going to get perfect prints with them. You will have failed prints. Um, you are going to have a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to leveling the bed and getting it right. The key is patience. Learn your printer. There are literally thousands of resources out there. Uh, people like myself... YouTube is a huge resource for this. D videos all over the place on anything you should ever need to do with this printer. But once you get it dialed in, it's definitely worth it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I really do appreciate it. Uh, we had recently went over our 200 subscribers list. Guys, I can't thank you enough for that. That means the world to me. Um, you know, I don't make anything off these videos. I do them because I love doing them. I like to share the information. So... Share the videos if you would. Definitely hit that like and subscribe. Helps me out every single step. We will see you on the next video. Have a fantastic week. And I got another cool one coming. We'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye.